Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are my favorite flip ups. I normally shy away from cheap modulars like this LS2 FF325 strobe. It sells for under 200 bucks and that scares me. Why? Because all cheap helmets struggle to be light, safe, and quiet. Those are just hard things to do without using expensive, fancy fibers. Now, if I try to add a complicated flip up design into the mix, I've fractured the shell, I've created a large panel gap for road noise to leak in, and I've added more weight. All of a sudden, light, safe, and quiet goes from difficult to damn near impossible. Cheap modulars fight too many battles with too few dollars. So they usually suck. But this LS2 strobe is the unicorn, that mythical modular helmet that is both cheap and competent. See how comprehensive the neck roll is? It's actually downright difficult to take this helmet on and off, but once I do, this makes a very tight seal, and because of that, the helmet is decently quiet. It's also way too light for a basic thermoplastic shell. 1,630 grams for a size medium, the thing's a feather. But it doesn't protect like a feather. The LS2 strobe got three stars from Sharp, which is a really good passable safety rating. And it actually has excellent impact protection everywhere, except for the left side, where it sucked so bad that the entire helmet lost two stars. I'd tell you to avoid crashing on your left side, but that's not really useful advice. LS2 usually has a bad habit of rattling, but this one is very tight. The vents, the face shield, the drop down sun visor, and it's all very slick and precise. Plus the helmet opens with the smoothness of a $500 showy, and the top detent holds with the force of 500 Gs. Cons include the lack of a pin lock visor. The strobe fogs up pretty easily, so it'd be nice to have one. Also, I'm pretty sure LS2 just wrote glasses instead of actually carving eyeglass channels because it's really difficult to wear shades in this helmet. And ventilation goes from bad to worse. And this chin port here flows a shit ton of air, but I mean, good luck closing that with gloved hands. And then this top port here doesn't breathe that well, and the rear exhaust slits are non-existent. Fitment-wise, the strobe is a long oval head shape, but it's not the longest of long ovals. Most neutral heads should still fit fine. And it only comes in two shell sizes, so if you're an extra small or a large, you're gonna notice that the helmet is more bobbleheadish than it probably should be. There is a drop-down sun visor, and the strap underneath is a ratchet rather than a D-ring. That's gonna please some people, and pinch others. Now, the best looking modular helmet also comes from LS2. This is the FF324 Metro Rapid. It's actually homologated from a regular full face helmet, which explains why it looks so good. Now, I think the blacked out vents and cowls combined with the really bright accent colors and the chopped off chin bar give it a really nice aggressive feel. I'm paying an extra 50 bucks over the strobe here, and the main upgrade is ventilation. And these chin vents, which are probably more accurately called chin holes, flow enough air to make a motocross helmet jealous. And then the top vents here are properly cowled to create high pressure intakes, and I get two exhaust ports on the back, which the strobe forgot entirely. I also get a pin lock visor this time around, which is ironic because I don't need one anymore. The Metro is so breezy that it never fogs. Other less than useful upgrades include this chin bar lock. It keeps the chin bar locked up, but with LS2's Herculean top detent, that isn't really necessary to begin with. Then there's the helmet's compatibility with the Lincoln RidePal communicator, which would be great if that comm wasn't entirely inferior to anything from Cardo or Senna. The biggest failure of this helmet is that the chin vents aren't closable. Or rather, they close with these annoying separate panels, which are going to break the first time you get stuck in a rainstorm and push them with a bit too much desperation. They're very finicky things, these. Also, this helmet weighs 100 grams more than the strobe, it's louder, and it has LS2's famous rattle, which is only entertaining if you're an infant. Fitment-wise, the Metro is one of LS2's only neutral head shapes. This is your one chance to get their famously good value without their infamous head-pinching oval. Of course, I have a drop-down sun visor, which LS2 puts into everything, and if I'm being honest, that strobe I just reviewed was a better helmet and cheaper to boot. But damn, this Metro looks good. Now here's the best option for ADV riders. It's a Scorpion EXO AT950. Basically, this is a $350 flip-up adventure lid with a drop-down sun visor. In other words, it's a cheapo attack on the Schubert E1. Shots fired. I think Scorpion is going to win this game of cat and mouse, partially because Schuberth's fat cats in the E1, the C3 Pro, the new C4, they're all needlessly overpriced and stuffy. But also, Scorpion is just sitting on an ace here. The 18950's heavily molded lines are gorgeous, both with and without that sun visor. It's a neutral head shape that's going to be familiar to most noggins, and the cheek pads, yeah, they are sort of overly tight at first, that's true, but they're bound to relax 
into a more comfortable fit over time. Also, this helmet is about as quiet as my variant, which is to say nothing special, but nothing awful either. And the trim is first class. I mean, this sun visor deploys with a cable rather than a spring, which I always love to see. Springs are gonna get dusty, especially out ADV riding. They get tired, they fail to retract fully. This is never gonna do that to you. I will say, however, that it's a little bit tricky for me to find this while riding. A more traditional placement down along the chin line probably would have been easier for me to grab. The visor seals brilliantly and uses a mechanism called a lip tech that actually sucks backwards on the last movement. This face shield has enough closing force to cut out the rain, to cut out the road noise. I'm pretty sure it would cut off my finger if I wasn't careful. But while I still have my digits, let me point out some screw ups. I need a flathead driver, or at the very least a coin to remove the face shield and the sun peak. And that's annoying. Also, the eye port isn't big enough, small goggles only please. And from this chin vent, I was hoping for a little bit more airflow. Pushing a big beamer around the tight trails, you'll notice that the AT950 gets a bit hot and foggy, especially with all the work your neck has to do. 1,780 grams for this size medium. Now, high-end modular helmets. We have the HJC Arfa Max from last year's video, and this new Challenger climbs TK1200. Obvious difference first, HJC will relieve my wallet of $550, while Climb robs it for $850. Both helmets have element number six in their shells, but HJC mixes the carbon with air mids and fiberglass, so boo-hoo, it's only 1,580 grams light. That's still better than pretty much everything except Climb's 1,510 gram TK1200. Both helmets are prepared for Johnny Nash and his sunshiny day. HJC with a spring-loaded shade, and I absolutely hate this thing. It's nowhere near dark enough, and I know I'm going to be pushing it back up with my finger eventually, because springs inevitably get tired out. Climb did a little bit better with their transition shield. This thing is pure magic. I think it uses a mix of centaur piss, fairy dust, and wizardry to magically get darker as the day gets brighter. And both helmets come with an anti-fog pinlock visor in the box, although only Climb actually needs one because the Arfa line it vents so well. At this point, the TK1200 falls apart. Let's compare visors. This is how a premium visor is supposed to move, and this Makes me feel like I'm having a seizure every time I open it. Then there's the flip mechanism. On the HJC, it's smooth with one solid detent on the top. Lovely. On the climb, however, it's sort of impossible to find the button to begin with. And then when you do, it's kind of randomly sticky or loose at different points along the range. By the way, the fact that this goes past vertical is only really a relevant safety benefit if you plan to ride with the helmet open. Sorry, Climb, but I'm on a roll here. This grand canyon of a panel gap is noisy as hell. And then the rear reflector shows up on every single colorway, even though it's decidedly out of place on the blacked out versions. Climb normally plays in the pro level, so how, oh how, did they make such a stinker here? Well, it turns out they just bought and rebranded an old laser Monaco to make the TK1200. And laziness is a deadly sin. Fitment-wise, both of these helmets use a weird chart. I'm a medium in pretty much everything, but my 58 centimeter head puts me in a large in climb and in HJC's Arfa line. Other than that, there's not much to report. Buy the Arfa Max over the TK1200 all day long, and yes, I prefer the Arfa over the Shoei Neotech as well. And that's it for modular helmets. Thanks for watching.